Okay, thank you for the introduction. So I'm, I'm guessing I'm one of the two designers here. Um, <laughs> I feel very honored. And um, I think um, it's, it's a great topic um, in this area in digital humanities in general, but also uh, digital scholarly editions to bring user-centered design into it. Um, so my topic is about co-creation. I don't know if uh, anybody has heard about it. Um, so it's a design approach that tries to bring all the stakeholders in the project, not only the users, uh, together and um, with the help of, uh, for example, workshops, um, tries to um, yeah, come up with uh, new interface design ideas that really um, consider all perspectives of, of all the stakeholders. Um, so that's why I said, uh, that's why the title, How Close Can We Get to the Reader? Um, so it's, it's really, um, my, my proposal is that uh, co-creation might be a way of um, getting closer to the goals and needs of the reader, but also to all the, the other people that have an interest in a project. So before I get into detail about what co-creation really is, um, I'd like to say a few words uh, about digital humanities in general. Um, and uh, after that, I will talk about co-creation and I will show some <coughs> examples of our work at the Urban Complexity Lab, uh, how we apply, applied co-creation workshops to uh, digital humanities projects. So digital humanities, so usually it's a project-based collaboration between um, humanities scholars and computer scientists. And um, so there is an interdisciplinary cooperation, but uh, often, as I uh, have uh, seen it, and I think that's, um, that's a problem that uh, is acknowledged quite widely, uh, real interdisciplinary um, cooperation is rarely the case. Um, and there are some, because of that, there are some misconceptions um, due to different perspectives. So um, I also say um, or ask, uh, can the <coughs> two disciplines develop a shared language? because I think we really need a shared language here between the two disciplines. And I think uh, that's where the designer comes into play. I think the designers really are um, good for um, assuming the role of a mediator between the two poles. And so as I said, I think um, the fact that uh, we're talking about interface design, user-centered design is really great here. Um, and that's really a good step forward. Um, and well, it, it works, uh, it has proven many times, proven many times that it works quite well. Um, so what is it about? Identifying user needs and goals uh, with the help of, uh, for example, qualitative interviews and uh, something like contextual inquiry and a lot of um, other uh, methods that could be applied um, in order to define requirements uh, based on these insights gained. And these requirements then serve as a kind of guideline for the design process. And as we have heard uh, many times um, in this conference, it's an iter iterative uh, process um, so usually you develop something, um, so you start with, um, with getting insights, then you develop something, build a prototype, um, it could be a paper prototype, as simple as that, or it could be a sophisticated software prototype. You test it with potential users, you learn something about, um, or about uh, how well the, the concept works, and maybe you um, change, you have to change something uh, in the next iteration and then you test again and that you do that several times. But I think there are some shortcomings of user-centered design and um, like as this, this is especially the case um, if we have cases where um, when we look at digital scholarly editions, um, so this, I think this is 
quite at the beginning right now, and uh, the new digital methods um, might help answering entirely new research questions that we don't really know about. So how can we identify these re research questions um, that are truly valuable to the user? We can't really ask them. So uh, we need a different way of um, getting together, really analyzing what the workflow is, what the needs are. And also, um, it's not always clear uh, what, might be, what might be the users, actually, what might be potential user groups um, for a particular edition or collection. <clears throat> and lastly, um, it is debatable if users, readers, are the only ones whose needs and goals you want to consider, because if we think, for example, of museums, institutions, we might also want to consider the perspectives of uh, yeah, custodians, um, other, all the people that are basically involved in um, building an, an addition or collection. So what is co-creation? Um, so actually it's, um, it's a design process that uh, has been applied for quite some time um, in the business context. And uh, as I said, it involves um, well, it is an involvement of all the stakeholders um, in the design and development of a, pro a process of a project, like, for example, managers, developers, designers, of course, the users as well, um, but product owners, uh, whatever, like all the people that have, have an interest in the project. And stakeholders are seen as the experts of their own uh, experience. So they are the people who, of course, can best um, yeah, uh, say or um, decide what, is, uh, what would the, be the best uh, tool for them for their own experience. Um, and uh, usually in this process, there is a phase where there is a collaborative creation of concepts um, with uh, a multitude of different views and attitudes. So all the views of the different stakeholders. And common methods are co-creation workshops and, uh, for example, cultural probes uh, as well. I'm going to focus on co-creation workshops today and um, show some examples for this. Um, and. So this is not a, not a given or that doesn't have to be the structure for a co-creation workshop, that, but that's how we um, experimented with it and um, how it worked for us. So we have like a first session where there is inspirational input um, regarding the topic or connected to the topic. Show, uh, so we show um, related work, other projects that um, yeah, might give good inspiration for the process about to, to follow. Um, then there's usually an ideation session where all the participants um, <coughs> write down um, ideas and um, brainstorm and uh, put their ideas on little uh, post-it notes. And then this is uh, put on a wall and clustered so um, prevailing topics are identified, can be identified. Um, and then based on this inspiration and based on these uh, ideas, uh, there is, um, there are, there's one or several tasks that uh, have the goal of um, really generating um, concepts, like sketching out concepts, um, interface ideas, um, and really make it visual so you can talk about it and um, uh, there can be a discussion of uh, what really are the important points that show up in these interface sketches. So that's the last part, wrap up and discussion. So uh, in this part, the, um, there's like a, this is like a summary and uh, the important points are identified for the design process um, to follow. So this is usually what it looks like. There's a lot of uh, scissors and pens and, and post-it notes and uh, glue and like all the stuff you can use to, um, to create something, to be creative. Um, here we see one picture of a workshop that was about um, 
the novel uh, Parallel Stories by uh, Peter Nadesh, an Hungarian author, and it was about visualizing the spatiality in the novel uh, that is very um, important or a very, um, um, that, that has a lot of weight in the novel. And here we see one example, um, one result of the workshop where um, the spatiality of um, one particular house in Budapest is uh, visualized. So there's this house that um, plays an important part at several points in the story. And uh, there are people in the house that are connected to feelings and objects. And so you basically have a network diagram of um, of these uh, different entities, and you can also change the time so you uh, see how that changes over time. <coughs> so, um, so what are um, applications for uh, co-creation workshops as, as we see it? Um, <coughs> based on these experiences we made, oh, I'm sorry, I need to drink something. <clears throat> so based on these experiences we made, um, we identified three different applications that are possible, and I think possible in digital humanis humanities uh, projects, but also I think this can be applied to uh, digital scholarly editions. Um, so co-creation workshops would be a method for um, identifying new interdisciplinary research questions as a basis uh, for designing new digital scholarly interfaces. So this is really before you really start a project, like um, the theoretical part of the whole project. Um, I think this will get clearer when I show uh, one of the examples. Um, could be a method for developing new and innovative interfaces while taking into account the perspectives of all stakeholders. So this is the classical idea of uh, co-creation or the classical um, application of co-creation. And um, it could also be helpful um, if you really know exactly what your users are and um, you have a well-defined user group and um, you want to um, you know a lot about the users and their work um, scenarios and you want to um, find uh, interface elements for these different scenarios. So the first example is or was part of a um, research proposal actually. So um, we, the, the uh, Urban Complexity Lab, we had um, uh, we were writing a research proposal in co collaboration with uh, literary scholars of the Humboldt University in Berlin. And it was um, about visualizing or um, creating um, a new interface or an interface for the um, recently discovered legacy of uh, Alex Alexander von Humboldt, um, especially the... Um, um, notes he made regarding his Cosmos lectures in Berlin uh, and uh, there have been uh, transcripts of these Cosmos lectures for quite some time but recently um, there, there were, um, uh, it has been discovered that uh, he also made a lot of notes uh, that wasn't um, known before. So uh, this material and also correspondence, correspondences and um, publications <coughs> and um, all different sorts of material um, would be available in the project and we were, we, had, we were having this idea that it would be, uh, could be really helpful if you have a way of connecting it, visualizing it, um, getting different perspectives with um, the help of a digital interface on this material. And uh, for the proposal we wanted to develop first quick, um, simple sketches so we could better explain what we wanted to achieve. And uh, here's some image of, of the process. Again, post-it notes. Um, we uh, were collecting ideas. And the next step after that would have been to sketch out um, interface ideas 
based on these ideas we, we generated. So every group should take two post-its of different clusters and um, create or develop an interface idea based on these two post-its. But, um, well, this, I, think, I guess this task was a little bit too abstract. It didn't really work out. And uh, we also realized we need to define what is actually our common research question. So a research question that is um, interesting for the literary scholars as well as for, the, for us as the visualization experts. And um, so here we can see again the different clusters. We have data, uh, types of relation um, sources, qualitative uh, research questions and quantitative re research questions. And, um, but we saw that it really we, we didn't have a, a shared uh, aspect here. So um, then we changed the, the course of the workshop we set together and we used this, what we have created so far as a basis for discussing what could be a common uh, shared research question. And um, so in the end, uh, we identified reading, like reading also, not, not reading text only, but reading visualizations okay, um, as, an, as a promising topic for the research proposal. And uh, so, uh, like, by improvising, we, um, we changed the, the course of the workshop a little bit, but um, got a good result in the end. Um, the second project, the second workshop I want to talk about is uh, part of a research project called Vicus, and um, it was in collaboration with um, the Stiftung Preußische Schlösser und Gärten, uh, an heritage foundation for uh, Prussian um, castles and gardens. And um, this was, um, um, they have a lot of different collections and archives, and one of them is uh, or were drawings of Frederick, Frederick uh, William IV, uh, King of Prussia. And uh, in this workshop, we wanted to um, like get all the stakeholders that were somehow, some, in some way, connected with this material into the workshop and uh, include their perspective. So, for example, there was an art historian, there was a scientific uh, editor, there were, there were um, developers, there were visualization experts and interfaces and experts. And it was very important to, um, uh, well, the idea was to um, make it available to a broader public, um, but it was also important to um, get the art historical perspective into the interface. So it was also important um, that there is some kind of cultural sensitivity. And um, no, that's what I said. Uh, we had this workshop and we identified uh, different clusters, important topics as well um, that might transport this cultural sensitivity. And um, here's some uh, visual result of the workshop. And um, so in the end, there were like different topics or um, basically three uh, main topics that were identified that it's important to show in the interface time, <coughs> themes, <coughs> and uh, texture. Um, and that's what we um, wanted to show in the, in the prototype, or wanted to include in the prototype during our design process. So um, I think I will try to quickly show what, what the end result was. So this is the, these are all the drawings um, lined up on a timeline, and you can like, um, you have an overview, um, you can see the distribution over time. You have um, themes here on the top and you can see to what the tags relate. And then you can zoom in and this is very important. You have the, you can see the actual texture of the drawing so you can really see the uh, lines of the pen and uh, you always get in um, the art historical um, context um, for the drawings. <clears throat> so this workshop was quite helpful as well to, to um, yeah, 
get all the perspectives into this project. Okay. Um, and the last one is actually not a digital humanities project. It's more like a, a real interface, uh, or like a typical interface design project. It's about um, developing um, uh, yeah, visual interface design elements for databases. Um, and this is an example where the user group was very concrete already. So it's, um, we, we looked at databases um, in an institution. Uh, the database contained um, funding programs. And um, so um, it's, it's for a government institution. And um, we interviewed users of these um, database systems and created scenarios um, that were typical workflows or that represented typical workflows with these databases. And then we printed these um, scenarios out. You can see them on the picture here, like 12 scenarios that uh, we thought uh, covered the whole, um, um, the whole range of uh, usage contexts. And then um, these were like um, criticized by the users that were invited to the workshop and uh, the other stakeholders. And then in the next phase, um, these scenarios um, were assigned to different groups and the groups developed um, some sketches or some ideas for how an interface could look like that, um, that uh, would answer or that would help in these scenarios. And here's one example, um, like uh, a map interface um, that could help you to find funding programs um, related to a certain regional, uh, certain regions. And um, so it's important to, to say um, I'm, I'm almost uh, finished. <laughs> um, so it's important to say four interface ideas were produced in the workshop. These ideas are not the, like the, um, the base for the design process after that. They are rather like a discussion um, or a foundation for the discussion and uh, a tool to extract the most important things or the most important requirements for the design process. Uh, for example, here it was modularity, exploration, collaboration, assistance, and a couple more. Um, but these uh, were the most important ones. And um, so what, uh, what can I summarize here? Um, so I think um, the, what, what we saw as important here is um, to make it work, you need, really need to uh, take away some of the skepticism, the inhibitions of participants first because it's very, uh, it seems very uh, strange uh, just to um, just keep on doing and not really um, uh, reflecting a lot. It's important to produce things and then you can dis discuss, discuss about it. Um, so you have to really explain what you're about to do. Um, then you have to define a precise question you want to be you want to uh, get an answer uh, to in the workshop. Uh, otherwise, you will just uh, make it too difficult for the participants uh, to focus. And uh, yeah, of course, be ready to improvise um, if it doesn't work what you have thought of. And um, workshop is only one part of the whole process, so you need to embed it in the whole design process. And it's not the answer, of course, to, to every question you have regarding the interface. Um, and it's important to provide inspirational input uh, at the beginning for the participants. Thank you. <laughs>